Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, is a fatal and devastating disease for which there's no cure today. So my team and I are focused on identifying the mechanisms underlying ALS to help with discovery of new treatments. So in our study published in this issue of Neuron, we have discovered that ALS-causing mutations in FOS inhibit intraaxonal protein synthesis and drive disease without nuclear loss of FOS function. So this has wide-ranging implications for understanding ALS and other neurodegenerative disorders and provides critical insight for future therapy development to treat patients. So ALS, also known as motor neuron disease or Lou Gehrig's disease in the US, is primarily characterized by the progressive loss of motor function, which ultimately results in paralysis. So the cause of this paralysis is the degeneration of a class of neurons called motor neurons, uh, which were nicely illustrated back in the 19th century by Cajal. So these unique cells begin in the spinal cord or brain and extend extremely long processes called axons to connect muscles to control muscle activity. But one of the first events in disease is the loss of these connections between muscles and axons, which are also known as neuromuscular junctions. About 10% of ALS cases are inherited or familial, and the identification of mutation in these causative genes has been instrumental in understanding the mechanisms underlying the disease. And so in this study, our aim was to understand how mutation in one of these ALS causative genes, named FOS, causes toxicity. So what is FOS? FOS is an RNA binding protein, primarily found in the nucleus, with multiple proposed functions. However, in ALS patients, mutant FOS can be mislocalized and aggregated in the cytoplasm of neurons and glia. FOS aggregation is also a hallmark of other neurodegenerative disorders, including forms of frontotemporal dementia, or FTD, which is actually the second most common form of dementia after Alzheimer's disease. So what we did here is we created a humanized mouse model by replacing endogenous FOS with the human FOS gene, either wild type or two ALS link mutations, and we found that these mutant FOS mice recapitulated aspects of ALS and FTD diseases. Using these animals, we uncovered a novel role of FOS in intraaxonal protein synthesis, which we found was impaired prior to symptoms and correlated with the accumulation of FOS mutants. So these findings demonstrate that reduced axonal protein synthesis is a component of ALS and FTD pathogenesis and shed light on our basic understanding of how local translation can be regulated. A hallmark of ALS patients with FOS mutations, as I mentioned earlier, is cytoplasmic aggregation of FOS. However, it was not clear if and how aggregation contributes to disease. So this is the first question we asked. The humanized FAS mice developed age-dependent motor deficits, including muscle denervation, recapitulating key hallmarks of ALS. These animals also developed features of FTD, a comorbidity commonly found in ALS patients, together with hippocampal synaptic loss. However, despite this is initiation and progression in our mutant FAS mice, we did not observe evidence of major cytoplasmic aggregation or mislocalization of the FAS protein. Another question we asked was, do ALS and FTD causing mutants of FAS, which are primarily found in the nucleus, drive disease through loss of function or gain of toxicity? So we found disease is driven primarily by gain of toxicity associated with RNA expression changes rather than loss of FAS function, as these changes did not overlap with those caused by the loss of FAS. But one really interesting finding we came across while studying this question is that the integrated stress response was significantly upregulated in our mutant animals. There was increased phosphorylation of EIF2 alpha, a master controller for protein synthesis, and this is really what led us to investigate the possible role of FOS in protein translation. I developed an in vitro system that will allow us to measure protein synthesis globally and locally within axons by culturing primary hippocampal neurons in compartmented chambers in which we can distinguish cell bodies from processes. I use pyromycin plus labeling to tag polypeptides undergoing active translation and the first surprising finding was that there is a substantial protein synthesis occurring along the axons of wild type motor neurons. Even more surprising was that translation was predominantly reduced in mutant axons compared to the cell bodies. And there was an increase of phosphorylated AF2-alpha in those same axons. This reduction in protein translation within axons correlated with the accumulation of mutant FAS in those axons. So then we confirmed this interaxonal suppression in protein synthesis in vivo by injecting pyromycin to tag the proteins that are active 
actively being synthesized and measure local protein synthesis in the sciatic nerve of humanized mutant or wild type fast mice. We saw that puromycin incorporation was significantly lower in the axons of mutant fast mice, despite equal accumulation in the surrounding myelinated cells. This correlated with the increase in the integrated stress response in the sciatic nerve by the increase of the phosphorylated form of AF2-alpha, and all this occurred before disease symptoms. This is likely to be due to the increased accumulation of mutant fast in axons. So this work opens new exciting directions of investigation. One of the things we're planning on doing next is to understand how suppression of intra-axonal protein translation by fast mutants induces neuromuscular junction loss uh, and axonal degeneration. But also our discovery provides an opportunity to test whether compounds that modulate integrated stress response pathways prevent or alleviate the age-dependent motor cognitive deficits associated with mutant fuss. If it were to be the case, it could provide really a valuable strategy for future therapy development to treat patients with these devastating neurodegenerative disorders. So this work would not have been possible without the support of our many collaborators and our funding agencies, and we really want to take this opportunity to thank them.